Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video I share with you my techniques and tips on how I use different pastel pencil brand names to create certain effects. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. Just running through the outline pretty quickly, I'm just going to do it freehand here using the 708 Carbothello pencil. I like to use this pencil because it's quite chalky and it's easy flowing so you can be quite loose with it. Um, the pastel matte colour is dark grey and basically what I'm doing is using imaginary lines and just getting a feel for the drawing and then the next stage will be the under drawing which corrects all this outline then so you can move things around while creating form with just some basic pencils. Now I usually use two brands for the under drawing which is the Carbothello ones and the Contia Paris ones. They're quite chalky and that's why I like them because you can easily move them around. I'm just ghosting the image now using a kneadable eraser and I've tried all sorts of different erasers and this is, seems to be the superior one I've found and this one is a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. I really recommend getting one of those. They don't damage the surface at all on the pastel mat and it just really does take off the, the pastel quite easily. I'll just leave in a little bit of mark there but uh, yeah it's really good to have in your kit. Now I like to use the Carbothellos first just to get some sort of loose marks down. They're very sort of chalky and it's easy to put down. They sort of glide across the pastel mat quite easily and it makes it so it's more fun. You can really enjoy being sort of loose and just let all these marks and movements happen. Um, now at this stage I'm not interested about getting the value right or the chroma all it is is just to get the drawing shaped correctly so everything in the right place uh, I'm still drawing while I'm, I'm putting the colour down so it's like creating form and just checking everything as I go along and then this will be the under drawing for when I start putting the rich colours on now I'm creating greys by using brown and blue or burnt sienna and blue and then I'm using yellow ochre to warm it up here and there and basically just using sort of minimal colours just to get that sort of form I'm looking for. So I'm getting the white down first then just glaze over the top with certain colours. For the nose there I'm using dark ultramarine and gold red, creates nice purples. Again I'm measuring as I'm going along, just getting that sort of basic shape working together. That's why I love doing this underdrawing because it, it, it's like really relaxing and it's really fun to do this stage because you, you can be loose and, and you can just enjoy getting sort of balance of shapes and everything, not worried about the details. That's why I like to use these chalkier pencils, the Carbothella and the Contia Pastel because they really are fun to use. It makes it so enjoyable just to move things around and not worry about, you know, all that detail to start with. Now my approach is to open your heart, let go of the mind, and just let all the movements happen. What seems to happen when you actually send love or open the heart to the image you're drawing from it magnifies the energy within that subject and it comes back at you, it seems to shine out more and you connect to it by keeping open, letting go of the mind so it just sort of you're aware rather than thinking and this energy will come through you and out of your hands. Now I'm applying the pigment very lightly, I'm hardly putting any pressure at all on that pencil, it just makes it it's so much easier to move things around and you can alter things. It's very lightly done. It's just to keep the tooth there so when I start putting more pigment on I've got something there to grab it. 
If you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. I prefer to work in these different layers, you know, the outline, underdrawing, then rich colours, then detail stage, because it just takes the stress out of it, and it's just fun. Every stage is fun in its own way. Now for the rich colour stage, these are Karen Dash pencils, white and a yellow ochre mix. If you haven't got those, try the Faber-Castell white and a sort of creamy colour will do the job. What I tend to do with these is use those underneath and then glaze over with the other colours and that shines through them. Uh, the reason I use the Karen Dash is that it's so rich in vibrance and that shines through the colour then, so I tend to put that down lay the colour on, put down, lay colour on until I get that sort of vibrancy I'm looking for, chroma because some, pl some places glow more than others that's what I'm looking at with this stage it's all about getting the values right the chroma, which is how it glows some places are desaturated, some are more saturated uh, sorting the temperature out as well now the background here, I'm using a Caran d'Ache colour that is similar, so it's like a blue-grey, so you have to experiment what colours you've got. You have to have fun just experimenting what works. I'm using like a light ultramarine there with a lemon yellow, mixing that together, seeing what works with that. Now here I'm using the Carbothello white, which I use to actually smooth things over because the Caran d'Ache can be a bit sort of grainy, so I use the white to actually very lightly sort of smooth things over. Now I'm putting brown in there with yellow ochre and then probably go over there then with sort of the sort of primary colours which is blue, red and yellow which will actually create the look I'm looking for. In this part here in the background I used yellow ochre to start with but it didn't glow enough so to create that chroma I always add a little bit of lemon yellow, it seems to do the trick. It makes it sort of sort of zingy and vibrant and then use your, your pencils accordingly over that yellow. Now here this is where I'm using the yellow ochre mix, it's actually flesh, flesh tone 5% it's called uh, but it's like a yellow ochre mix but I put that down first then place the actual burnt sienna and lemon yellow and that creates the correct tint plus the chroma as well because that light of this pencil here I'm putting in will shine through the colour which gives it that sort of vibrancy that I'm looking for it sort of shines through but to create that chroma or that glow I'm adding that lemon yellow with it it creates a nice gold then that combination burnt sienna and lemon yellow together what I'm doing is sensing to see whether the actual colour is vibrant or if it's subdued. If it's vibrant, I use the Caran d'Ache colours underneath. If it's subdued or desaturated, I use the Carbothello white. Now, using dark brown, then what I'll do with that is mix a bit of burnt sienna in with it and then a bit of black to get that depth in certain areas. Now mix a cold red with a lemon yellow as well to create that zinginess within that wood. So you have to experiment with these different things using a white Faber-Castell now because it's quite sharp. So I've used that because it's a detailed pencil and then I'll just glaze over with the chalky ones. I'm experimenting with the Faber-Castell at the moment but I'm finding that the white is very handy to have in your kit because it's quite sharp and it's very good for detail but it's very vibrant as well, it's really fresh white so really great. So if you can't afford the Caran d'Ache buy one of those Faber-Castell whites. So I've saved the real-time footage for when I start doing the details and the actual mouse itself. Uh, this is a Carbothello black, I'll start with that to start with and see how I go with it and then maybe I'll use a, a richer black in there which will be a Caran d'Ache one, maybe later. But for, for start with, I'll use the Carbothello. Add something with the black, so I'm going to put a bit of blue to start with, see what that's like. This is dark ultramarine type blue. Uh, mix that in with it and see how it looks. 
Now for the highlight I'm using the Faber-Castell white. Really impressed with the white in this uh, range. It's very fresh. It's really hard so you can sharpen the actual pencil. The lead is hard. So it makes it easier to actually put the detail in. And then I, what I do is glaze colour over the top of that then. So, now the brand name of this blue is Conti Paris. Now they're really great for glazing with. They're very vibrant and light transparent if you like. It's really, really great to use. They are ideal for that sort of thing. Now I'm twisting the pencil of the Faber-Castell to get more pigment on. That grabs it onto the pastel mat. So that's a little tip just to twist the pencil and then glaze again over the top. Now the rich colour stage is not the detail stage, it's more a stage where I'm trying to create the correct chroma and the value. So I'm just playing about with different colours, see what works. Now I'm actually using a flesh colour tint there from the Karen Dash range and also the 5% flesh tint which is like a yellow ochre mix. Now I'm using these Karen Dash colours because of the vibrancy of them. So when I glaze over the top, this light will shine through and create more of a aliveness to the actual painting. Now I'll sort out the correct colour shade and everything in the detail stage later on in this video, but uh, it's just a case of just getting some sort of feeling of the vibrancy and the value and all that subtlety of blend of colour I'll be putting in later on. Slow it down to real time now, just showing you how I'm doing the little ear here and just trying to make it like velvety. I'm using a warm red here from the Carbothello because it's chalky. I've pl placed the white down beforehand and then I go over the white again. This is the Faber-Castell white because it's nice and sharp. Um, you can use this or the Caran Dash. I'm finding that the Faber-Castell works just as well, so uh, <clears throat> that's what I've used there. So I'll put in the warm red, mixing the white in with it to create the tints. Now I'm adding a little bit of dark green with this red here just to create the desaturation of the red and a sh like a shadow of the red. So if you ever need to make a shadow always use the complementary colour what you're using and that seems to do the trick. And now I'm using a bit of lemon yellow here to create chroma even though it's in shadow a little bit there's still a little bit of vibrancy and glow to it so to add that glow just add that little bit of lemon yellow always does the trick putting the colour in very lightly just scraping it across the top and then mixing in the burnt sienna in this case with the warm red just to create that sort of tone I'm looking for and then what I do then is add a little bit of brown it just creates the correct sort of shadowy look I'm looking for sometimes you use brown sometimes you use the complementary colour uh, but in this in this case brown seems to work pretty well and then just using your Faber-Castell because it's a very sharp pencil like I mentioned before and then creating that sort of velvety feel just go in the direction of the little hairs on the ear just to create that sort of illusion of detail. I'd just like to take this opportunity to thank all my Patreons for their wonderful support every month. I can't thank you enough, it just means the world to me. If you're interested in joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check out the link in the description below. Now this mouse will be on my Patreon as a step-by-step real-time audio, real-time video, so you'll be able to see every stroke I make, so all the footage is there. Now it's a great price, it's only £4 a month, but that will give you access to every video which is in my library. So. Be sure to check that out if you're interested. Now these are the chalky Carbothella pencils I'm using, burnt sienna, olive green and lemon yellow and that's a great combination because the burnt sienna acts as the red and then the green is the opposite of red which is the complementary colour which creates subtle shadows and then I'm using the actual lemon yellow 
to create that sort of chroma. But the green and red together creates that subtle sort of um, colour I'm looking for for the coat of the mouse. Just slowing it down to real time to show you how I'm doing these whiskers here. Using the brown to start with just to get the position and once I'm happy with that I'm using the Faber-Castell black again because it's a sharper point because it's a harder lead it's easier to sharpen. Now for the nose I'm drawing in the actual shape of everything with the white so I'm getting the structure somewhat like first then once I'm happy with that then I will glaze over them with the cold red and a blue which will create a purple. If you're enjoying this video why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It would mean so much to me as this will help the channel to grow. Now here's a great tool for blending those very very fine details. It's a tapered point and it's silicon and it's called a colour shaper. It's worth getting one of those in your kit because you can't really get in there with a cotton board or you're pressing your fingers so you need something like a little sharp point. It's almost like painting with a brush then and in certain areas it's, it's great to use. really finding this Faber-Castell white very very useful. Like I say I'm just starting to use Faber-Castell so I'm experimenting with them. Um, really great for detail work and like I say they're really vibrant. <clears throat> now I'm putting this on very lightly, I'm not idly putting any pressure at all, I'm using the side of the point and I keep turning the pencil to find another edge because I sharpen my pencil with a knife. You can see me turning the pencil here look to find a sharp edge and then once I've got a sharp edge then I'll slide it across then. I'm getting very conscious now how long this video is becoming so I'm just gonna have to rush through it a little bit now. Um, <clears throat> but just yes, yeah, just sort of using the edge of that pencil and then what you tend to do is with whiskers you put little highlights here and there, it's like glimmers on the actual whiskers so it's just little places a little bit more lighter just little touches here and there a bit more pressure on the pencil just makes all the difference and then I just go over with a bit of green or whatever color is needed just to create that subtlety rather than just having pure white always add little bits of color with it now for the subtleties in the, the fingers and the hands I've used dark green with the red to create natural shadows and using the Faber-Castell and the Caran d'Ache white just to create the right sort of vibrancy. The final subtleties and details are still to come um, but it looks detailed but it's just as, again it's a rich colour stage just getting everything sort of in the right sort of value and chroma. And just basically again going through all the uh, same coat, doing the similar sort of thing to what I did in the ear. No good repeating myself, just the same procedure, putting the white down, glazing over with the colours, white down, glazing over the tulip colours. Uh, please check out my link in the description below for Patreon if you want to see this as a real-time audio, real-time video, over four hours long. Now for the final details and subtleties, now I found these colours in my kit, my Faber-Castell kit, really uh, perfect colours really for what I'm looking for, for the final glaze. So I'm just glazing over now because I wasn't quite happy with the chroma of what I've done there. Uh, sometimes you're limited to what you, you can do with um, the Carbothello and the um, the Caran d'Ache, you know, so really this has been quite interesting using these Faber-Castell because it's opened up another another sort of facet to my art really because to put in these subtle, these sort of colours after, after on top of what I've already done, it really added some sort of shine to it and made the, the uh, fur or the coat of the mouse come alive really, even more so than normally. Uh, so well chuffed with these pencils. So I'm using the Faber-Castell white as well just to refine the bits of the hair and then just slightly glazing over and not putting not much pressure on at all with these colours. One thing I tend to do is to look at the overall painting and put little of bits of colour here and there, little fine details here and there just to get it balanced because you don't want it too detailed in one place 
you need to the focus needs to be on the whiskers and the, the eye and the nose and everything else should just be suggestions really so but what i've done is put sort of similar colors everywhere so it all balances you know with these new faber castell colors i've put on the end so i've gone through it all just putting a little bit here and there and just putting them final details in just finishing off with these whiskers very slightly doing it just a little touch here and there hope you've enjoyed the video here's the actual painting of the correct angle rather than being in perspective on the easel if you're interested in seeing any more work please check out these links here.